This week, Russian President Vladimir Putin will go to the United Arab Emirates and Saudi Arabia, taking advantage of a rare trip overseas since his invasion of Ukraine to strengthen ties with important oil producers. Welcome everyone, in today's video, we're going to tell you Putin plans something big with Arab nation. Putin will be in Abu Dhabi and will not attend the COP28 meeting, which is being held in the neighboring Emirate of Dubai, according to Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov. But before we proceed the further video, if you're new to this channel, remember go ahead and to hit the bell icon to subscribe, so you won't miss the informative videos we will upload in the future. According to the Kremlin, Putin will meet with UAU President Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan and Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman on Wednesday to address a variety of issues, including trade and investment and Israel's military war. According to Interfax, the oil market and the Ukraine war will also be on the agenda. Visit reflects Putin's increased confidence in traveling beyond Russia. Despite us and European efforts to isolate him on the world arena, with his economy on a firmer footing and war in Ukraine at a standstill. Given Russia's reliance on energy earnings, the Gulf state's collaboration with Moscow is critical. Putin's visit to the two important Gulf nations is a strong indicator that Russia is breaking out of its international isolation, according to Fyodor Lukyanov, head of the Kremlin's Council on Foreign and Defense Policy. According to him, the decision increases Russia's Middle East influence and demonstrates that the UIUA and Saudi Arabia, both longtime US allies, are keen to balance their foreign policy interests. Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates, and Russia are all members of OPEC, the oil-producing alliance that agreed last week to extend and tighten its production cutbacks. Saudi Energy Minister Prince Abdulaziz bin Salman underscored the amount of confidence and collaboration between Riyadh and Moscow in an interview with Bloomberg on Monday, a relationship that serves as the backbone of the OPEC group. According to the state-run RIA Novosti news agency, Putin's team in the UAA will include some of Russia's most important officials, including Deputy Prime Minister Alexander Novak, who is in charge of OPEC talks. Putin will be accompanied by Bank of Russia Governor Elvira Nabulina, Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov, and Industry and Trade Minister Denis Monturov. According to RIA, businessmen including as billionaire Vajid Alekparov, a Lukoil PGSC shareholder, may also join. Putin may be looking to exploit a schism between the United States and Saudi Arabia over Israel's assault in Gaza against the Hamas militant group. Moscow backs Riyadi's call for an immediate ceasefire, as well as efforts to resurrect the 2002 Arab Peace Initiative, which calls for Israel to withdraw from Arab and Palestinian territory as a preliminary to establishing a Palestinian state alongside the Jewish one. The selective application of international legal and moral standards, as well as the contempt for the horrendous crimes committed by Israeli occupation forces against defenseless Palestinian citizens, Saudi Foreign Minister Prince Faisal bin Farhan stated last month in Moscow. While the U.S. has warned Israel about massive civilian Palestinian casualties, Washington has maintained its backing for Israel's campaign against Hamas which the U.S. and European Union have branded as a terrorist organization. Iriad has also taken a different stance toward Iran, which has strengthened its connections and military cooperation with Russia since Ukraine's incursion. Despite public and private cautions from Washington to Iran and its network of armed groups not to cause a regional war with Israel, Riyadh has gone out of its way to interact with the Islamic Republic. According to the semi-official Tasnim news agency, Putin will host Iranian President Ibrahim Raisi, who will head a group to Moscow on Thursday. As Putin seeks to strengthen ties with Gulf leaders, America's support for Ukraine is being called into question. President Joe Biden's budget director warned this week that if lawmakers do not adopt an emergency funding package, the U.S. may run out of resources to aid Kyiv by the end of the year. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky stated that his country's counteroffensive did not achieve its objectives because partners did not provide the anticipated armaments. Putin has visited China and former Soviet neighbors, but has seldom traveled Russia since ordering soldiers into Ukraine in February 2022. 
triggering a slew of international sanctions. In March, the International Criminal Court issued an arrest order for him for alleged war crimes, restricting his travel outside of his country even further. The Russian president did not attend either the BRIC summit of emerging economies in South Africa in August or the Group of 20 meeting in India the following month, which is not a signatory to the court. Neither Saudi Arabia nor the United Arab Emirates have joined the IC. Putin is more confident. This density of exterior visits has not been seen in a long time, said Alina Suponina, a Moscow-based Middle East specialist. Both in Saudi Arabia and the UAE, Putin's goals for the visit are the same, OPEC, the Middle East crisis and Russia's presidency of BRICS. Putin met UAE President Mohammed bin Zayed in Abu Dhabi, where they discussed energy cooperation and modern technology, according to Russia's state-owned TASS news agency. The Kremlin said ahead of the meeting that the two leaders will examine ways to promote de-escalation amid Israel's attack on Gaza, as well as the conflicts in Syria, Yemen, and Sudan. Putin was greeted with a 21-gun salute and a flyover of UAA military jets trailing smoke in the colors of the Russian flag upon his arrival in Abu Dhabi. The warm reception President Putin receives in Abu Dhabi on December 6 during his working visit to the UAE cannot but highlight the depth of Russia's as global isolation. The Russian mission in Geneva declared in a defiant post on X, formerly known as Twitter. Putin then flew to Riyadh, where he met Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman for the first time since October 2019. According to Saudi broadcaster Al Arabiya, the Crown Prince and Putin discussed ways of working together to promote stability in the Middle East, mentioning their tight ties in areas such as energy, trade, and investment. According to Saudi official media, Putin assured Mohammed bin Salman that nothing can block the expansion of our amicable relations. However, it remained unclear what Putin intended to discuss with the Crown Prince on the oil cartel. Putin has friendly relations with both of the oil-producing Gulf states, which have remained neutral in the face of Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Despite Western pressure, UAE authorities have signaled ambitions to strengthen economic ties with Moscow, with UAE Trade Minister Thani bin Ahmed al zuyudi vowing last December to take commercial links to even higher heights. The UAE's gold industry, a profitable sector of the economy that has also helped Emirati geopolitical clout extend as far as war-torn Sudan, has also seen an increase in business as a result of trading with Russia. Meanwhile, many see Saudi Arabia's decision to restrict oil supply as a gain for Putin, who relies on high oil prices to fund his war in Ukraine. Wednesday's journey to the Gulf is unusual for the Russian president, who is wanted by the International Criminal Court being personally responsible for the kidnappings of Ukrainian children during his war on the country. That's all for today's video. Because neither Saudi Arabia nor the UAE have ratified the ICC founding treaty, they are under no duty to hold Putin in connection with the warrant. Don't forget to like the video and hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any new videos from our channel. Thanks for watching and see you all soon.